Locked On Podcast Network and State Farm present Paving the Way, a new series highlighting important voices across Locked On's network. Every month, our host Kanani Stevens will showcase other Locked On hosts who come from underserved communities to hear the challenges they face to become a sports broadcast personality. Who will be paving the way this episode? Find out now. State Farm believes it's important to champion diverse voices and create positive impacts in our neighborhoods. That's why our good neighbors at State Farm are proud to support the Paving the Way series and their mission to provide support to underserved communities. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. On this edition of Paving the Way, we talked to David Harrison from Locked On Commanders about his career in the military and how it brought him to Locked On. And David, in Paving the Way, we kind of like to see how our hosts got to where they are, how sports has been a part of their lives. So growing up, how was sports really a part of your life? Uh, I mean, really, it's just it's something that going back to uh, my childhood, like we I lived in Germany for a period of time because my father uh, was stationed over there. And back then you could only get I want to say it was like three channels of, of, of you know English speaking television and. Uh, I don't remember what else was on those channels, but I do know the sports was on those channels. So watching football games was pretty much the only access to American uh, television I had. And then, you know, stacking on top of that, uh, the Frankfurt Galaxy, like the NFL, or the World League was was still an existence thing before it became NFL Europe and all that stuff. You still had like NFL caliber players who were like minor league, you know, caliber players playing overseas. So my father and I would go to Frankfurt Galaxy games in Frankfurt, Germany, and that was my first exposure to live football and and just the atmosphere and the, and the competition and, and all those things. So that's really kind of like the earliest memory I have of sports in general. And then, of course, you know, growing up, I think, you know, most of us probably played some sort of like little league. And, you know, I was into baseball and soccer and basketball, football, flag football while I could. And then, you know, as soon as I strap on pads, I did. I don't think I was good at any of them. You know what I mean? But I certainly had fun uh, playing them and did my best. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's just something that was kind of ingrained in me and then of course like every other child of an ohio state fan uh, i'm you know i've grown up a buckeye fan and and you know we're we're obnoxious so that's just it's kind of just ingrained in my dna at this point it's always cool when you can kind of like either take your family's fandom or just follow it in that way um when you moved around a lot did you feel like sports Mm -hmm. was something that kind of helped you i mean i'm assuming moving around was difficult but kind of have that to tie in yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like when you move to a new place, whether, you know, uh, so we, I started off, I was born outside of Fort Sill, Oklahoma. We moved to Fort Drum, New York, to Germany. And then we lived in, in El Paso, Texas for a period of time, finally settled down in Fort Carson, Colorado. Like, you know, I think military kids all get to know, you know, what it's like to be the new kid. You're, you know, everybody's, you were very versed in being the new kid. And the thing about sports is it doesn't matter if you're the new kid, you all are on the same page. Like as soon as you step on the baseball field, you know, whether you're right field, shortstop, second base, like, you know, your role, you know, everybody else's role. There's no, there's not this stress as a child of like, where do I fit in? Where do I mesh with this group? Like, it's very simple. You know, if you're the middle linebacker on a defense, you know where you fit in. It's just a matter of now if you're going to do it accurately, and do it correctly. But it, it, it really kind of helps you. It's just kind of a, a forcing function, I suppose, of like, here's how you're going to get to know all the new kids in your area, because this is something that we have in common. You don't have to go seek it out. It's just kind of naturally there. Was football your favorite sport as a kid, or did you kind of follow every sport and then football ended up being the focus now? Yeah, football is definitely my favorite sport. I was I was I was pretty big into basketball when I was when I was younger, especially like early teen years. But football was definitely always number one, and and college football more so uh, than anything else. My father didn't really have an NFL team, so I just kind of left to my own devices uh, in that standpoint, which I think is why I don't have like an official NFL team that I call my favorite team is because he didn't. So it's Ohio state, Arizona state now, cause I went to college there. Um, but then the Frankfurt galaxy, like to this day, you know, anytime I have a conversation with a football fan, I'll tell them my favorite team is the Frankfurt galaxy. They're still playing. It's not NFL Europe. There's no world league, but they're still playing. Um, and there's a subscription service. So I get to stream their games or watch them in replay. And, and, you know, they do, they do pretty well. All right. You know, they made the playoffs, lost to the Ryan fire, the Ryan fire ended up winning the championship over there. So like when your team loses to the championship team, you kind of feel okay about, that type of a situation but yeah it's it's you know it's it's one of those passions and then you know the competition of it all and the strategy of it all as i got older into my own first career that's really what kind of spoke to me was the team building aspect of it and and that's my like like draft season the off season free agency all those things that i thought that's like my favorite part 
of football, which most people I think would expect the games and and all that stuff to be the favorite part, which don't get me wrong, I love it, but it's really just the how did we get here, how do we get better? That's the part that really interests me. Uh, one of the things I loved about Locked On when I joined was that I feel like the hosts come from all kinds of different places. Like there's some people that are media people, but there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. had a completely different job and then kind of ended up in this. And I know you were one of those people that had a totally different life and you kind of came back to this. So how did this all come together for you? Yeah, that's I mean, that's kind of a sad story, I, honestly. So I was in the Army. You know, I joined the Army when I was 17 years old. And uh, I think it was like 2000. 2007, I think, or so. So I was like seven years into my career, uh, and I met I met this guy, uh, Alson Lee, Dick Alson Lee, uh, is his name. We became really good friends. I'm an Ohio State guy. He's a Florida Gator guy, and this is the time frame where the Florida Gators are beating the Buckeyes and like pretty much everything. So he was having a great time with that. But you know, we would go back and forth, a little bit of trash talking, but also just uh, some you know sports nerds, whether it's football, basketball, whatever the sport is, just getting into the to the minutia of it that you know bores the the, the average fan, but keeps guys like me really. Uh, intrigued and uh, we ended up going to Iraq together for a period of time. I went, uh, we met in Missouri. I ended up getting stationed back in Germany uh, myself. He ended up in Germany, you know, uh, like a year and a half or so later. Um, so we saw each other. We weren't in the same location, but we were in the same country. So we got to see each other quite often. Then he ended up getting killed uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, I remember I was on the rooftop of uh, my sister's rehearsal dinner. Um, she was getting married in San Diego. So I was on leave from Germany there and, and I found out that he had been killed. So that, that hit me pretty hard, you know what I mean? And kind of set me into a little bit of a of a tailspin myself personally and professionally and kind of got to a point where I was like, you know, I mean, I'm either going to let this kind of destroy me or I'm going to find a way to make this a positive, you know, and kind of leaning back on our first really our first kind of roots of our relationship was, you know, again, sports. Um, Obviously, like other things grew from, it, you know, family connections and and stuff like that. And then it just kind of I don't know, it all just kind of fell into place. I don't really remember like the exact process of it, but I know that. You know, during my career, my, even my father, who taught me about football, got to a point where he would tell my wife jokingly, like, sometimes he talks about stuff and I don't know what he's talking about. Um, and we're talking about something that, you know, he taught me about. So and it's just and people are like, oh, like you need to be one of those guys on ESPN or you need to be one of those guys doing this. And, you know, it kind of just kind of struck me. I was like, you know, maybe that's, you know, that's a way to take our relationship, keep it alive for one, but also honor uh, what he meant to me. And then, you know, at, at the time, like I didn't know if it was going to lead anywhere, but uh, obviously where it's taken me is 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 amazing. Um, at, you know, this network and I try to tell my listeners and viewers as much as I can, like they changed my life. You know, a lot of times they they thank me for, you know, helping them drive to work or, or whatever it is. And I tell them, like, y'all changed my life. Like I'm in the stadium because of you. I'm at the NFL scouting combine because of you. So, you know, I promise them that, you know, they've changed my life more than than I've impacted theirs. But I appreciate them. Uh, letting me do that. But yeah, it, it keeps his memory alive. You know what I mean? And when I retired from the army, um, his widow, you know, I, I messaged her and we were, you know, talking and we've, we talked uh, a lot since then, but she kind of, uh, she was kind of like, you know, you retiring because we're the same, we're the same age. Um, she's like, you know, you retiring is kind of like him retiring. Uh, so it means a lot. You know what I mean? I'm trying to keep it together here. Sorry. Um, but you know, that's, so that's, it's, so it's like, all of this is on purpose. You know what I mean? Like none of this is just happenstance, um, but it's amazing. You know what I mean? And, and it's a great way for me to stay connected to somebody who's meant a lot in my life. And to find a new purpose for yourself and really throw yourself into that. I know we talk a lot about locked on what they've given to us, but they let you be yourself too, right? This isn't a job yeah. where you're coming in and you know, we need you to do this, this, and that. It, you can come and be on, your honest self and talk to your viewers and be that. And there's not a lot of jobs like that. And I feel like that's yeah. something special about it. Absolutely. No, 1000%. That's, that's been huge. I mean, especially like during some hard times, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a minority. Um, I'm a veteran. Uh, I come from a law enforcement background because I was a military police soldier in, in the army. And, you know, it's, it's not quite the same, like civilian law enforcement and military law enforcement aren't really the exact same things. Right. But there are some, some connections there. And I've done a lot of training and had experiences with, you know, federal agencies, local agencies. So I've, I've met a lot of law enforcement people. So like when there's like stress and, and strain in our time and in our society and stuff, like it's sometimes it's hard to navigate those waters and, and, and all those things. But yeah, there's no, has done a really great job of, you know, like letting every individual person kind of, you know, it, it, I think it's it's really great when leaders set kind of a left and right limit. You know, like here's your boundaries, everything within those boundaries, do it the way you need to do it. And that, that that's what I really think that this network does a really good job of. And, you know, those limits that they do set are 
very general. And, and I mean, I think every locked on show you turn on, um, you know, like some people love the consistency of things and that's great. But like every locked on show you turn on can really have a different flavor to it. And, and, you know, the crossover episodes, I think are really amazing for that. I'll do crossovers with guys like Kyle Krabs of, of locked on dolphins. And it's like, well, here's the X's and O's and here's the, the route combinations that these guys need to, to look out for. But then you have like another host that you might do the next week where it's all about the buzz story and it's all about the intensity and the passion of the game. And like, it's just a different flavor, you know, no matter where you go, but it keeps it interesting. Um, and it's, it's, it's really been a great, great uh, part of great group to be a part of and to see grow from, you know, doing it for the love of doing it. And then, and then now doing it because it's, it's so established and, and something that, I mean, I was just talking to pro football focus guys today uh, internally in their office and immediately as soon as they got my contact they were like i love locked on so i mean you know like just the influence that that we're able to have uh, and the partnerships we're able to work on are just amazing um you do locked on commanders and obviously they've had a lot of yeah. change turmoil things going mm -hmm. on within that organization what's well, been like to kind of be there firsthand cover that and kind of talk to everybody through it as well. Oh, it's a trip. I mean, it's, you know, you, on one hand, you feel for the people involved, you know, like, you know, you look at a coach like Ron Rivera and I mean, he's a, he's a good, you know, he's a good man and, and, you know, his heart's in the right place and the effort, like, you know, this is one of those guys where he's like late to his own meetings and, and stuff like that. Like, you know, and, and you know that this isn't a situation where something is failing because of lack of effort. When it's, when something fails with a lack of effort, it's almost easier to kind of say, okay, let's discard this and move forward. But when it's, when there's people that are in in good positions and good people in good positions, really giving it their all to see them struggle, it, it you know, uh, for like I said, for a guy like me, like I empathize with them, so you know, it kind of it kind of it kind of sucks in in a certain aspect. But at the same time, it's also really interesting because having that front row seat, like you get to kind of dissect a little bit more of it, and and then like you said, like the show, you know, allowing you to kind of dictate how you do your show. I, I, I pride myself on not so much you know educating people so so much as as to kind of clarify things and and you know we've got this this subtext initiative where you know some of the listeners and viewers get to text me directly and and, and they've taken advantage of that where they text me a question like hey i heard this um you know like sp specifically actually on wednesday i got a text message from an from an insider or on tuesday who said hey i heard on social media somebody was saying that terry mclaurin was complaining about eric the enemy was okay well here's the actual situation that happened and you know i can see why people took that stretch to say that that's what was happening but at the end of the day like if you just look at the facts and the black and white that we have that's not necessarily the case um and it's just it's really cool to be able to kind of be that that connection between you know, some of the pop culture that is sports and, you know, a buzzword happens and it goes crazy and everybody jumps to these with these wild conclusions and being able to kind of be sometimes that grounding, you know, force, but also sometimes being the voice of truth. Like uh, when, when the trade deadline was happening, uh, you know, I told my listeners, I said, listen, Montez Sweat, you know, if he's traded, you probably get a second or a third form. Chase Young, you're probably, you know, you're going to top out at a third and it made some people mad. And then Montez gets traded for a second. I did our, you know, I did our now video or quick videos that we do. And I said, hey, because Montez went for a second, you're probably looking at no higher than a third for Chase Young. It, it drew some anger from some people. Um, then he ends up going for a third. It's like, okay, you know, and, and again, it's not to take a victory lap, but it's just now I know the people that, you know, have been listening and, and, and supporting what I do. At least I know I'm giving them, you know, accurate information uh, as best as I can. So I know that that group is, is you know, is hopefully taken care of because that's, that's the effort that I'm trying to put into it. What's something that when you started out with the podcast, maybe you weren't really quite sure about or, or that you worked mm -hmm. on and that now you're at a point where you're like, okay, get this. Hosting. Yeah. yeah. So James Yarko. So I, I solo host Locked On Commanders, but James Yarko is my uh, amazing co-host of Locked On Bucks. And, you know, I, I won't, I won't stretch the story too out too long, but when we were just writers and I, I don't say just as in like that small but when we were not podcasting i was actually pushing him i was like bro i want to get into podcasting you need to do it with me i don't want to do this alone da, da, da. and he was kind of resistant to it at first and i kind of wore him down and i remember like our first like production meeting if you want to call it that like we're just getting ready to launch our podcast we don't have any type of support like we're paying i think it was like 30 dollars a month to host our own podcast on our on a platform we have no ads we have no way of, of monetizing this we're just doing it you know again for the love of doing it and I was like, cool. I was like, so you'll be the host and I'll be the co-host and I'll just kind of respond. And he was like, hold up, dude. Like, this is your idea and you're going to make me be the guy that brings us in everything. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that aspect of it. He's done a great job with it. But then, you know, as we grew together, 
like there were episodes where I would take the lead or I would do the crossovers. And so obviously when, you know, the Bucks are at home, I'm doing it. And then obviously with Locked On Commanders, um, you know, from when I joined that uh, with my co-host at the time, I kind of took that role and uh, I call it being the Trey Wingo of it. Right. And, and I've I've grown a lot more comfortable with it uh, to the point where I actually I really enjoy it. Um, kind of being able to kind of facilitate the pace of things. So now on Locked On NFL on Fridays, that's the role that I have with Tony Wiggins. And it's fun because I kind of set the table and I just let Wig, who has like one of the most amazing personalities on this network, um, just kind of do his thing. And it's it's amazing to be able to play off of him, but also set the table for him. Um, it Yes, Wig, Wiggins is one of the w- most wild people I know, but I love him in every aspect. And he brings, yeah. that is a different flavor of show for sure. Um, yeah. What's something that you kind of, maybe not necessarily advice, but obviously people want to get into podcasting. It's not easy to talk to yourself for, you know, a half an hour yeah. every day. What's advice you have for someone that kind of wants to try it out? Um, just, just, I think the best advice that I give to somebody is, is don't expect perfection from yourself. I think a lot of times, especially in content creation, like you want to throw something out there and you just like, want to knock it out of the park you know what i mean or, or like young writers that tell the same thing like you're not going to win a, a pulitzer for your for your first article you're probably not going to win one for your thousandth article you know what i mean um but sometimes we have this like almost ridiculously high standard for ourselves and we don't allow ourselves the room to grow um and, and the expectation that you're going to need to grow um and then just grind you know what i mean like i mean like i said you know for the for the first uh, however long we did our own podcast like we were paying out of pocket making no money off of it but you know it was it was reps you know what i mean like the value was in the reps the value was in getting to know some of the fans like the fans that did come through and listen to the show and, and gave us their insight and give us their feedback like that's where the, the the insight was or the value was and then you know when locked on bucks became available uh i literally just i just i don't remember how i did it but i just found david Locke's email and like just emailed him out of the blue and was like hey i host the bucks podcast i'd like to join your network because i think it's cool and you know he he we sent him an episode. He listened to it and he sent like a long, long list of, of bullets. It was like, do your next episode like this and we'll go from there. And I took it to James. We sat down and we just and did it. You know what I mean? And that's where you have to be humble because, uh, I, you know, part of me actually honestly thought like when he sent it, I was like, he's testing us to see if like, cause it was a long list. Like I'm not even lying. Like it was, if I could still find it, it's, it was a pretty long list. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, he's, he's trying to test our metal. You know what I mean? Like, are you guys, who are going to take feedback and run with it, or you guys are going to take feedback and take it personal and get defensive mm-hmm. and shut down. And uh, so, you know, we went there, we knocked it out. And uh, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's not the cleanest episode we've ever recorded, but like it, it showed him that we were coachable. And I think that's the big thing is, you know, just, just, uh, you know, give yourself a break, right? Like give yourself the opportunity to grow, grind and be coachable. Like if you do those three things, I think you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Is there anybody you e- either watched coming up that kind of inspires you or that you work with now or, or who do you kind of look at and like take p- pieces from and kind of like try to use in your own game? Yeah, I got I have Ross Jackson, uh, locked on Saints, locked on NFL, my boss. And I'm not I'm not kissing up. You know what I mean? Um, but Ross has been amazing. I mean, I've actually told Ross, like I've been on the network longer than Ross and I don't really remember not having Ross on the network. And even before he was the channel coordinator for the NFL, like even when he was like the locked on saints host, like he's a guy that very quickly, I was like, this dude's got it. Like this dude's got talent. This dude knows what, he, what needs to be done. Um, and he's a guy like I, I listened to locked on saints uh, and watch locked on saints all the time um, scouting him. You know what I mean? Like I, I literally scout him and he's not the only guy on the network, but you know, he's, he's, he's the first guy that i ever scouted on this network and he's the guy that even to this day i continue to scout on this network and i know he would never you know publicly take his flowers but i'm gonna i'm gonna do it here anyway and make him take those flowers because he deserves them and and every other nfl host and anybody i think in this network that works with them would tell you the same but that's you know within the network but like you know while i didn't really ever have like sports media as like an objective for myself when i was younger um like i kind of mentioned i was about 10 years into my career when this really kind of became a thing. Um, so I was already, you know, I was like 30 years old almost like, but you know, I, I look back on guys like Stuart Scott, you know, I look at look back on guys like Rich Eisen who just happened to also be like, you know, we're, we're, we're like best friends. And I know Rich keeps Stuart Scott's memory as alive as, as he possibly can. Like I remember just like, I'll watch, I don't even know. I'll watch putt putt highlights if it's Rich Eisen, and Stuart Scott, you know what I mean? Talking about it. So, but I think what was really interesting about them is not only were they entertaining, but they were authentic. Like, you, you, we see people in, in, in any business, we see people in, in, in walks of life who are trying to be a person 
but you can tell it's fake. You can tell they're they're trying to be this persona. Um, and I don't think that ever really plays very well. Um, so what I really liked about those two guys is they were who they are, or they were who they were because that's who they were, not because they were trying to sell you on something. The fact that they're selling you on something like, hey, this is an entertaining clip um, is just you know the cherry on top. And again, going back to the network, like being able to craft my own style and my own show and and my own method out of my own likeness, you know, allows me to be authentic, um, which is great because everything's recorded. And, you know, I've had people on Twitter, like take clips of my show and be like, you said this. And I see myself on a video clip all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah, I did say that, but because I was authentic, I now know how to react. You know, you don't, it's kind of like lying, right? Like if you don't tell the lie, you don't have to cover the lie. Well, if you're authentically who you are, then everything you say, you can be willing to either back up or sometimes just take your medicine and say, yeah, you know, I messed up a little bit there. Yeah, you're on record either way. So that's always good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there anything new going forward? Obviously, Locked On's always doing new things, crazy things mm -hmm. that you want to do going forward or are you just trying to kind of get better every day? I mean, that, you know, I'm just trying to get smarter at what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Every, mm -hmm. I think every, like sports fans are so smart today. Um, and then they have access to so much information today. Sometimes maybe it's like too much access to information. You know what I mean? But again, that kind of, I think that's where I kind of take pride in my role is like helping to dissect some of that information that they have access to. And that's what's made like the mailbag episodes and the insider mailbag episodes I do, uh, which I stole from Ross Jackson. So there's, there's more flowers from them, but um, you know, I just try to get smarter every day and I use my access to do that. Like I've had, conversations with 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 guys in the locker room that are you know I, I literally tell them like this is just educational for me and i'll ask them you know sometimes it's a look sometimes it's you know going up against this defense or going up against this type of coverage or when you see this uh, i've i've been able to take clips on my phone and you know ask them like hey can you can you do like a five minute film study with me and we'll sit down and yeah. and the guys have been great about it and they and they educate me you know what i mean because i'm not a guy who's ever like i joined the army at 17 i didn't play college football i didn't play in the nfl and but everybody wants you or I think it has this expectation of you to be an expert of what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. what I want to talk about are the things that I am an expert on and leave the rest of it, what I'm not an expert on to those who are experts. But at the same time, the things that I know that I want to talk about, the things I know my listeners want to hear about, I want to become an expert on those things. So the more I grow, the better I can, I can serve that audience. And um, yeah, so that's just, uh, I was actually just bugging Ross about it before we started recording this about all the, the tools I've got a meeting with, uh, with PFF tomorrow to see if I can get access to more information and more data because I just I just want as much information as I can possibly gather to be able to bring uh, the best and, and the clearest picture I can to our audiences. I think that's great advice too, just studying your butt off and kind of like you can never yeah. know too much information. So always trying to learn a little bit too. Before we end the show, we do want to highlight an organization that we're working with in an effort to support paving the way for future generations faced with less favorable opportunities. State Farm and Locked On will be giving a donation to the incredible organization Everyone On for every host we feature on this series and for David today. The mission of Everyone On is to unlock opportunity by connecting families in underserved communities to affordable internet services and digital literacy training. Doing so creates significant positive change in communities and society as a whole. A big thank you to our good neighbors at State Farm for their support on behalf of our hosts and helping pave the way for so many others in our communities. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm and the Locked On Network share a common goal, helping to make our communities a better place. State Farm is committed to helping amplify individuals and organizations that lead the way in diversity, inclusion, and social good. Because we know that investing in community building and uplifting diverse voices is crucial to creating a sense of belonging. State Farm is proud to sponsor the Paving the Way series and celebrate the change makers that have paved the way in making our neighborhoods a better place for everyone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.